Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, for those who haven't met us, I am Quinn. And I'm Josh. And today we are gonna install a winch in behind the factory bumper on this 2015 to 2018 Ram Rebel truck. And to make this winch a little easier to use and to make the control box last a lot longer, we are gonna relocate it up into the engine bay with our control box relocation bracket and the wires that will come with it. It's gonna be great. Another optional accessory that we sell with this uh, hidden winch mount kit are our dual lighting kit. These uh, six inch light bars, which actually measure eight inches, um, put out about 3000 lumens each. Uh, they've got this nice little black fascia in the back. Um, good waterproof rating uh, and they're pretty easy to install. Uh, the winch we're going to tuck behind the bumper today is a Warren VR Evo 10S. We love these winches. They have a wireless remote. They are very waterproof. For the amount of power they have, they're super light. And uh, yeah, they will not let you down. To install that winch in behind the factory bumper, we are going to be using our hidden winch mounting kit for the 15 to 18 Ram Rebel, which comes with all the heavy duty bracketry you need, along with all the complete heavy duty graded hardware kit and we're gonna get going on it now to start with the control box relocation we just have to unspool like two rows of the winch cable so that we can get to these four millimeter allen key fasteners um, and that is what is holding the control box to the winch so we'll get those out and we'll start taking the control box apart So now we've got the control box off. We're just gonna use a 13 millimeter and take the leads off the winch side and then we'll crack open the control box and take the leads off of that side. So pull the boots back. And it's just these three here. We're gonna pull the ground cable off as well. Uh, so we are getting paid by the hour here, so we're gonna use some power tools, but uh, now it's just these four Phillips screws on the bottom of the control box. Take those out. And then we'll just take it apart. And we can unclip this. go we'll set that to the side and uh, we'll start working on the cables now so now we are gonna take uh, all the leads off here they're the four 13 millimeter nuts and then on this side there's a Phillips screw to hold the ground cable uh, and best way to keep track of what's where is either take a photo or just mark it with a paint pen whatever you have and we are gonna mark it that and uh, we'll get started. So this is the wiring harness that comes with our VR Evo control box relocation kit. It is higher quality cable than it comes with from the factory and you'll see it is color coded to match up exactly how it was when it came off the winch, and then one of the ends here, this is the control box side. And this is the winch side. The control box side is formed, and it has the smaller terminal on it, is the easiest way to tell. And everything's also wrapped up in a really nice factory looking loom. So now we're gonna install our extended wiring harness. Uh, just note that the red cable, the small diameter red cable, will stay on there. So we'll start by Putting the, the bottom two is normally the easiest. There is an 18 inch power cable that comes with the kit as well. Uh, just because this is so much closer to the battery, you don't need the many feet that come with the winch and it will just go on the red terminal. Just do make sure that that small diameter wire stays there. So now we've got our extended cables on. We have our new power cable all hooked up 
these are all tight and the terminals aren't touching the leads at all. Uh, we left a gap here and the ground's hooked up as well. So we can go ahead and plug in the lid for the control box and reinstall it. Just like that. It will come with this bracket and you just want to make sure the side of the control box that has the plug-in for the winch controller is facing up. So we'll just mount this bracket right here. So the slotted side is on the worn side. So we have the winch prep for installation. Uh, next step is we gotta prep our winch mounting system. So we're gonna grab this big, large main plate first, and out of your hardware kit, grab these two countersunk socket head cap screws, and two of these 3 8 retaining washers. And I'm just going to insert this in this countersunk section here. Same on the other side. Flip it over so the threads are on the back side. Put this washer over, and then using a 916 or 14 mil deep socket, we'll just press those in place. And that's just going to hold that there for later. <clears throat> so, with those two fasteners sitting flush, Time to grab our fair lead mount bracket. That's this one here. And this is gonna be positioned on the long edge. Also not the side that has this caster to it. And we are gonna be retaining this in place using these 3 8 carriage fasteners. So they'll just come from below here. They sit in these square slots. And we're just gonna drop a washer over top and then a 3 8 nut. And then we're gonna repeat that three more times for these holes here. Time to install the winch onto the mounting plate. So take the winch, so it's in its normal kind of state here with the line spooling off the bottom. We are gonna roll it over onto its lid. Like so. And then take our winch mount assembly here and place it on top. That way the line spools out on the fair lead. We're gonna take these square nuts that come with the winch and insert them into these positions here on the mounting feet. And then we're gonna take the hardware that comes with the winch and fasten it down to the winch plate. Now we're gonna position this so that when you pull on your rope here, that there's about an inch gap between the top of the drum. That ensures that it's not gonna rub on this edge while you're winching. We'll tighten it down. We're gonna pop the hood, chalk the tire, and disconnect the battery. So now we've got the winch system prepped. Uh, next step is to install it on your truck. Have to remove these inner fender wells here in front. So that is held on by these 
three fasteners, eight millimeters, and then there's two clips that just hold it to the frame. And once we pull this out, we'll have access to the plugs and the fasteners for the bumper. step is to disconnect the fog light harness. Just depress this tab and pull it out. After the switch is disconnected, then we can remove the bumper. The bumper is held on with uh, six fasteners. Uh, there are 18 millimeter nuts on them. <laughs> Three on each side. So now we've got uh, those six 18 mil nuts off the back of the bumper, grab a friend, and we're gonna lift it off. So now that we've got the front bumper off, we're gonna just take these tow hooks off. There are three 18 millimeter nuts on the bottom. And then rinse and repeat for the other side. So now that we've got the bracket mounted on our control box, we're just going to take out this 10 mil right here up by the fuse panel. And you can see like there would be a lot of dirt and stuff that could get in here if it's down close to the ground. So that's why we do relocate this up into the engine bay. Keeps it out of the stuff and makes it last a lot longer. So we just kind of get the wires down around the fan there. sneak this 10 mil in the bracket. And tighten it back up. Okay. So now that we've got the control box all in place up there and we have the wires hanging down, we are going to attach them to the winch. Easiest way we've found to do that, if you don't have a swivel chair or a transmission jack, is just to use the box the winch came in. We'll uh, take these 13 mils off again, and then you hook up green to green, yellow to yellow. This black terminal will share the same ground terminal. You know, I'll actually do this one first. So we have the factory ground cable and then the control box relocation terminal share this ground. And now that we've got all of the terminals tightened up, we're just going to install the boots. So now that I finished struggling through putting these boots on, we are going to adapt the frame to fit the fasteners we ship. They are specced a little larger and uh, with a higher tensile strength than factory. So they don't quite fit in these holes, but uh, if you have uh, like a chainsaw file or a die grinder or something, just have one close and uh, it's not much. Just, uh, yeah, a little bit of clearance on these three. Just like that. Next step is to take these. They came out of the tow hooks, little horseshoe thing. And it's just going to slide in to these holes here. And same on the other side. So with these in here, next step is to lift it on. I'm going to lift it because Josh didn't have his Wheaties this morning. He was just plain toast. Like a psycho. And this stud here, the 3 8 stud that we pressed in earlier, is gonna go in that slot there. Thank you for doing that, Quentin. I couldn't have managed that myself. And we're gonna retain it, retain it in place using the half inch hardware that comes in the kit. This is just temporary to hold it until we prep the bumper for installation. We're now gonna put the frame reinforcement bracket on and this top hole here that focuses 
is going to go on to the stud, the 3 8 stud that is on the top there. Uh, found it. Followed by a washer and 3 8 Oops. at the camera. We're just gonna get it finger tight until we put the tow hook on. Now we're gonna take this tow hook and slide it underneath the threads here. And put the factory hardware back on. Same for this side. And then the factory fastener that came out of the back here. And we're gonna thread that all down. There we go. We need to replace these fasteners here with the high tensile strength half inch bolts that go in here in their place. Easiest way is to remove these mounts. Uh, that's easily accomplished with a T45 Torx bit and an impact. And we'll just buzz these connectors out. And that way you can lay this on the table. It's also gonna give us easy access to this grill section, which uh, we can remove and add the light kit. Grab your favorite persuader, and we're just gonna hit these on the head. And then we're grabbing this piece of hardware here, half inch carriage, sliding two washers on. Inserting it so the slot slides freely, and then retain it in place with this retaining washer. And then I grab a 19 mil deep socket and push it down into place. And then rinse and repeat. Oi! With these brackets out of the way, we can now remove the center insert. It's held on by too many fasteners. But uh, first part, we have to remove this harness. I take some side cutters and just clip these nubs off and then poke it out. These five seven millimeter fasteners. And these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clips. And then because that's not enough, there's two little molded plastic fasteners here, and we're just gonna cut those off with side cutters. Okay, we're gonna install the light kit now. Start off with the brackets. Our brackets have a P for passenger or D for drivers, uh, and it uses the factory hardware, so grab your T45 Torx bit, this one passenger. Install our light kit that we sell. It just drops in between these brackets. And then we're gonna secure it in place with hardware you'll get in your hardware kit. It's these metric stainless button head cap screws. And then you can just line it up in between and snug it down. We're gonna strap these wires 
back out of the way. And then we've got a video on how to wire your lights. I'll link it in this video here. We do it on a Fortune 2500. Just uh, follow those steps. It's uh, identical. So we're reinstalling this section here, reattaching all these fasteners that we removed when we uh, took it out. And once we have the bumper all prepped and ready to go back on, we'll just install the fair lead onto the fair lead bracket here. Make sure you put the winch rope through and we'll just center it on these slots. There is a lot of adjustment after the fact, but it's good to just start in the center and figure it out after the bumper is in place. So we're gonna put the front bumper back on and a good tip is just to push all these bolts all the way either up or down so that they'll line up with those holes a lot easier. So we've got the bumper installed now with the light kit. It looks fantastic. Um, at this point, we'd normally go and torque all the bolts to spec and attach the winch. We are still gonna do that, but first we're gonna pull this off and show you another way to install this without the light kit. We are back with the insert. We need to make a hole for the fair lead. So first, let's take the fair lead that we're using and center it. in the mount so there's just an equal hits on either side that looks very 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 close and then you can paint pen where we're going to be trimming this uh, painters tape also works quite well for making a guide to cut along so we've got it marked out now you can cut this out with aircraft shears, uh, like so tin snips. Probably work at it with some fine cut side cutters. Uh, potentially a grinder as well. I like this size of cutting tool. We're just using a little air powered zippy. And then don your safety gear. Just take your time. So there's the insert trimmed out. I think a reciprocating saw would have been uh, the tool of choice there, but we still got her done. Um, taking a coarse double edge file there, it's nice for just cleaning it up. And then we took it right down to there. As far as depth goes, get rid of those honeycombs in the back. Fairlude just fits, just with a tiny bit of breathing room on either side. All right, so now that we've got our honeycomb cut out, just enough room for the fairlead, we're gonna reinstall this piece. All right, so we've lined up the insert uh, just on those pins that we had cut off earlier. We reinstalled the plunger back into these clips and then it helps if you just kind of tighten the clip up a bit as you're pushing it in. And we'll pop, just like that. We'll do that for the eight on top and then we'll reinstall the five screws along the bottom as well. And we're throwing the frame mounts back into place. The uh, easiest way to know what goes where is this is where the toe lug comes out. So we got the bumper all prepped inserts back in, frame mounts are back on, everything's snug. We pushed all of the fasteners that are holding it to the truck up to the top of the slot, and now we're gonna fit it back on the truck.
Now we've got our six half inch bolts all torqued up to 50 foot pounds and we retorqued the nuts and the bolt on the factory tow lugs to 35 foot pounds. So we're just going to plug in the light harness again and get that tucked up out of the way. So now that we have all the fasteners tight underneath, we're just going to reinstall the inner fenders. Now we had those three eight mil screws that go in the outside and the two clips on the inside. So we have inner fenders installed. The entire winch mount system is all buttoned up and tight. Last step is going to be to hook the battery back up and wire in the winch. So we normally just undo this fastener right here. It's a 12 mil. Hook up the positive terminal there. And then the ground is a 10 mil. I'm gonna go find one. So we're just gonna install the negative terminal for the winch now. Loosen off the 10 mil. Got it right here. We'll get it all snugged up and then we'll get it installed on the battery. Snug up that 10. We're good to go. And just to keep this positive terminal looking factory, we notched up here and made some room there. Just get reinstalled like that. Just to make sure Josh wrangled those electrons correctly, hold the top button on your worn remote till the blue light comes on. And then that one's full in. Done. Now, if it's safe to do so, you can crawl underneath here and access your clutch by turning it 90 degrees. Here, right, click, and then spool it out. But it's not always safe to do so. So what I generally recommend is this wireless controller is good up to 100 feet, and there's only 100 feet of line on here. So you can, the best part, oh, that's the wrong way. Or just keep tension on it, walk your way out to whatever you need to hook up to recover to. Clip on, and then hop in your truck, sit in your truck, and uh, yeah, use it to recover. Uh, just when you make sure when you're spooling, is you'll want to keep an eye on the drum so it doesn't spool up into uh, one. Just so it spools evenly. Clip it back on. I added a little piece of protectant there 